How's it going folks? Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of footage that I took at the Colorado Guitar Show and Vintage Voltage Expo, which took place on March 20th in North Glen, Colorado. So this all took place in a hotel. On one side was the Vintage Voltage Expo, which is like a big swap meet. In the middle here was this antique radio display. And then on the left hand side was the uh, guitar show, or at least part of it. The other part of it was in the rooms below where I'm shooting this from. Uh, out here you have a bunch of uh, random booths with various instruments and a few different builders. There's that guy selling wood. There's a bunch of acoustics out here. There's one builder that built some banjos. Moving down to the floor, we've got this cool Rickenbacker bass that I saw. Some uh, unique Epiphones that I had never seen before. Some Strat-shaped Epiphones. They're kind of cool. This was Dwayne, the organizer of the event's prize possession. This really beautiful PRS hollow body. Moving into the interior rooms, there's this super sparkly single cut Goya. Never heard of them before, but I guess they existed since the 50s. That white fretboard, those inlays, super cool looking guitar. These guys also had a 50s telly here, thin line. Very, very cool. Over here we got some sort of four track, a bunch of old parts, knobs and bridges and things like that. A couple random guitars, cool acoustic top, an old SG, little electric mandolin of some sort. And then here's one of many Dan Electros I saw. There'll be another one here in a sec, there it is. And I saw even more in the vintage voltage side. This isn't a Dan Electro, but it's like a Longhorn little 12 string. This guy also had these really old comic books that were cool from the 50s or 60s. Here's a Fender Music Master from 56 or 58. Super gorgeous, really cool one pickup guitar. He also had this awesome Tele. There's a little Jaguar over there and a, a Supro to the left. Now I'm gonna highlight some of the builder booths, starting with Rebirth Guitars. There were one or two builders there that are more focused on the modern type of guitar with these awesome figured tops, poplar burls, spalted maples, resin fills, these awesome stains, just really beautiful bodies and full builds. Uh, they sell all their stuff on Reverb, definitely check them out. Down here were a bunch of like B-stock bodies that they were selling. They had another box on the other side of their booth. This was like a cool shark tooth V guitar. This is one of their Tele builds, matching headstock with this awesome roasted bird's eye maple fretboard. Beautiful inlays, this vibrant purple pink burst. I don't know what you call it. Looks great though. And here's the final example I'm showing of one of their modern builds with an awesome fretboard. It's got like a bird's eye maple headstock. Again, this was Rebirth Guitars. Check them out on Reverb. And going from one modern guitar to another with Victim Guitars. These are definitely more metal focused. Really cool inlay design. This like crackly almost lightning electricity look. This guitar's got this cool etching to it. It also has etching in the fretboard that you can kind of see. The camera didn't pick it up too well. And then for some reason I didn't take video of the front of this V, but the back looks cool. Um, you can see it and all of his guitars on Instagram at Victim Guitars. Now something a little more traditional from Grayson American, or maybe it's Grayson. They mostly do pickups, but they had a couple cool builds here. Um, definitely check out their pickups online. That seems to be their main thing. Moving on to the bass representation. These are from Nom de Guerre. These just had super awesome, unique pick guards, very beautiful wood choices, a spalted maple here. Um, he innovated a bit. The necks are bolt-on, but they bolt-on from the front. The builder said he didn't like flipping his base over to have to like take the neck off, so he developed it like that. And yeah, the, the necks on these were roasted and gorgeous. And 
some very cool bases. The only bases other than a victim at the show that I saw. This is DWP guitars. They're kind of like modern takes on retro styles. Some cool little like unique twists on some classic designs. And like Nam de Guerre, the builder is a touring musician and he incorporated a lot of that experience into refining his designs. Moving on from there, we have Henriksen amplifiers. These are solid state amplifiers. All of them have two inputs. They're really good for jazz and clean sounds, um, but they're pretty versatile from what I've heard in demos. They'd be really good for like singer-songwriter types, going to coffee shops and things like that. Moving right along to Debrado Rezophonic Guitars. He was actually playing a Henriksen amp, and you will hear that right now. So that was the guitar show side of the event. There were a lot of builders and vendors that I didn't get a chance to showcase in this video, but I'll do my best to uh, link to their websites and social medias in the description. Be sure to check them out and support the local builders of Colorado. And from here, we will move on over to the vintage vulture side of the event, which is honestly a completely different vibe from the guitar show. All right, so unlike the guitar show, Vintage Volt was entirely in this ballroom. As you can see, it's pretty big. Filled the whole thing. Tons of people on this side. Way more than I anticipated, and apparently the organizers as well. Three times the amount of people they expected. So I basically just wandered around and pointed my camera at anything that I thought looked cool. And we'll just look at a few things that I highlighted here. Uh, there were a lot of vinyl records for sale. These were a bunch of old metal records from a bunch of bands that I mostly hadn't heard of, like Demon, Earth Crisis. But yeah, lots of dudes doing this, looking through vinyls, bunch of records, some CDs, some cassettes, but again, mostly vinyls. Here were some Slayer jigsaw puzzles <laughs> that I thought were funny to exist. Like, I'm really into puzzles, but also Slayer. Back to vinyls, these were some laser cut vinyl clocks with these cool laser cut designs. Uh, not something I would probably ever buy, but they're pretty neat. You can buy one if you want. Here's a bunch of old radios. A bunch of clock radios. Some guy rifling through tubes over to the left. Right there. Some sort of transistor tester. It's the Precision Model 400. Obviously. A bunch of tubes down here. There were a lot of tubes around. Tube vendors. Tubes were out in full force. This vendor had a bunch of telegraphs and telephones. Everybody had their own little niche. Some people had radios, some people had amplifiers, like this guy. They also had a bunch of Casio keyboards, those were cool. Remember in the guitar show when I said there were a bunch of Dan Electros? Well, here's two more of them. I think those are the only ones I saw. A uh, couple reel to reel machines and a bunch of record players and Monty Python the Holy Grail laser disc. Some more tubes. I should have bought some, but I didn't know which ones I needed for my amp. Uh, do you like Elton John? What about the Denver Broncos? 
This table had a bunch of camera equipment and video equipment that was pretty cool. I had this rad projector. A bunch of fuses. This tube tester that was $400. Looks super cool. I would never need it, obviously. A square wave generator. Resistors. A bunch of hi-fi uh, audio equipment. Nothing that I know anything about, but it's chrome. It looks pretty. It's expensive. They had eight tracks here. Pretty much everything that's old existed at this show, probably. Like this cool oscilloscope. While I was filming this, the person who was running the booth was talking about how they went to high school with the band Rush. I like to think this person just knows about adult movies. He's like, ask me about adult movies. I don't have any, but I know all about them. This person sold VHS tapes. Very discreet, uh, away from the kids. And so yeah, that pretty much sums up my experience at the Vintage Volt Expo and Colorado Guitar Show for 2022. It was a ton of fun, and uh, thanks to Dana and Dwayne for letting me film and bring my obnoxious camera and make this video. So yeah, folks, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe, please hit the like button, and I will see you in whatever video I end up making next.